Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Summit Performing Arts production of Disney's Newsies, the musical. We are so proud to present this inspirational true story about young people who used their voices to speak out against the unfair labor practices in New York City in 1899. Throughout the pandemic, this story of young people has inspired our own kids at Summit High School to strive for their best and to seize the day, no matter what obstacles we have faced in this challenging year. Thank you all for helping us keep the arts alive in Summit. to the street. I don't want anyone should see I ain't been walking so good. Quick griping. You know how many fellas fake a limp for sympathy? That bum leg of yours is a gold mine. Oh, if someone gets the idea I can't make it on my own, they'll lock me up in the refuge for good. Be a pal, Jack. Help me down. Whoa! Oh, you want to bust the other leg too? No! I want to go down. You'll be down there soon enough. Take a moment. Drink with me in my penthouse high above the stinking streets of New York. You're crazy. Because I like a breath of fresh air. Because I like seeing the sky and the stars. Oh, you're seeing stars all right. Them streets down there suck the life right out of my old man. Years of rotten jobs stomped on by bosses. And when they finally broke him, they tossed him to the curb like yesterday's paint. Well, they ain't doing that to me. Everyone wants to come here. New York is great for those who can afford a big, strong door to lock it out. And I'm telling you, Crutch, there's a whole other way out there. You keep your small life in a big city. Give me a big life in a small town. They say folks is dying to get here. Well, I'm dying to get away to a little town now. nowhere, you. Oh, I don't need folks. I got friends. Say, what's about you come with me? No one cares about a gimp leg in Santa Fe. You just hop a Palomino and ride in style. Oh, feature me riding in style. Bet a few months of clean air and you could toss that crutch for good. Santa Watch me run. 
Hey. Don't you know that we's a family? Would I let you down? No way. Just hold on, kid, till that train makes Santa Fe. Time for dreaming's done. Hey, Albert, I'm a race to specs. Get a move on, boys. Them papers don't sell themselves. Down to 
mistake on account of Asuka. Can't count a 20 with his shoes on. Hey, 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 hey. another 50 papes. I don't want more papes. What kind of newsy don't want more papes? I'm no charity case. I don't even know you. His name's Jack. Right. This right. here is the famous uh, Jack Kelly. He wants to escape juvie on the back of Teddy Roosevelt's carriage made all the papes. How old are you, kid? I'm 10. Almost. If anyone asks, you're seven. Younger sells more papes. And if we're going to be partners... Who said we want a partner? Working with Jack is the opportunity of a lifetime. You learn from him, you learn from the best. If he's the best, what's he want with me? Because you got a little brother and I don't. Look sad, kid. <laughs> we're going to make millions. This is my brother, David, and I'm Les. Nice to meet you, Davey. My two tips come off the top, and we split the rest 70-30. 50-50! You wouldn't try to pull a fast one on a little kid. 60-40, and that's my final offer. Oh, that's disgusting. It's just business. Newsies, hit the streets. The sun is up, the headline states, and this kid ain't getting any younger. We'll all be out there, carrying the man and man. We're always out there, smoking every summer that we can.
is in trouble. Circulation is down for the third quarter in a row. But, Mr. Pulitzer, every newspaper's circulation has been down since the war ended. Whoever said war is hell wasn't trying to sell newspapers. We could use an exciting headline. What have we got today? The trolley strike. That's not exciting, it's epic. It's boring, folks. Want to know, is the trolley coming to rain? No one cares why. And the strike's about to be settled. Governor Roosevelt just put his support behind the strikers. That man is socialist. Teddy Roosevelt is no socialist. He's an American hero. The man wants to outlaw football for being too violent. Football? Violent? You're right. He's not a socialist. He's a commie. No. Mr. Pulitzer, please. You must try to sit still. Gentlemen, you're making Nunzio nervous. And when Nunzio gets nervous, I don't look Pretty. You never liked Roosevelt. You wrote an editorial against him day after day when he ran for governor. And guess what? He got elected. How am I supposed to influence voters if they're not reading my opinion? Big photos attract readers. Do you know what big photos cost? But without flashy photos or big headlines, how are we supposed to sell more papers? There's an answer right before your eyes. You're just not thinking this through, people. <laughs> Trim a bit there, just a modest adjustment can fatten the bottom lines. Sit still. Shaving is tricky, the razor should float. Shave me too close, and you may cut my throat. It's the simplest solutions that bolster the bottom line. But how does that help us sell more papers? We don't sell papers, silly newsy sell papers. I've got it. Right now we charge newsies 50 cents per hundred. Yes. But if we charge them 60 cents per hundred... Now you're getting somewhere. A mere tenth of a penny per paper. Every single news you would have to sell 20 more papers just to make the same amount as always. My thought exactly. It's genius. Oh, it's gonna be awfully rough on those children. Nonsense. They will be learning a real-life lesson in economics. I couldn't offer them a better education, not even if they were my very own. And I'll train them to be like an army that's marching to war. Proud of themselves and so grateful to me, they'll be begging to pay even more. When there's dirt on our shoes, boys, for God's sakes, relax. Why throw them out? All we need is some wax. Listen well to these barbershop lessons, for they'll see you through. up in the morning. Just a few common sense, gents. That's the bottom line.
Our dad tangled with a delivery truck on the job. Messed his leg up real bad. That's how come we had to find work. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. Sorry about your dad. Hey, uh, why don't you come home with us for dinner? Our folks would be happy to have you. Mom's a great cook. I just remembered I got plans with the fella. He's probably waiting on me right now. Is that the guy you're meeting? Run for it! kids called the refuge. The more kids he locks up, the more the city pays him. Problem is, all that money goes right into his own pockets. So do yourself a favor and steer clear of him and the refuge. Hey, you up there! Shoo! No kids allowed in the theater! Not even me, Miss Meta. Jack Kelly, man of mystery! Get yourself down here and give me a hug! <sighs> Where you been keeping yourself, kid? Never far from you, Miss Meta. Boys, may I introduce to you Miss Meta Larkin, greatest star on the Bowery today. She also owns the joint. The only thing I own is the mortgage. <laughs> pleasure, gents. A pleasure? What is wrong with you? You're blind, they got no clothes on! That's their costume! But I can see their legs! Well, step out of his way so he's could get a better look. <laughs> Theater's not only entertaining, it's educational. <laughs> got the picture, kid? Miss Meta, I got a little situation out on the street. Mind if I hide out here a while? Well, we're better to escape trouble than the theater. Is Snyder after you again? Hey, Jack, did you really escape jail on the back of Teddy Roosevelt's carriage? What would the governor be doing at a juvenile jail? Well, just so happens he was running for office and wanted to show he cared for orphans and such. So, while he was getting his mug in the paper, I got my butt in his back seat, and we rode off together. You really know the governor? He don't, but I do. <laughs> Say, Jack, when you get some time, I want you to paint me one of these backdrops. The last one you did here is a doozy. Folks love it, and things have been going so well that I can actually pay. Oh, I could never take your money, Miss Meta. You pictured that? Your friend is quite an artist. Calm down, it's a bunch of trees. You're really good. That boy's got natural aptitude. Jeez, I never knew no one with an aptitude. Miss Meta, you're on. Really? Can How I am I doing? <laughs> Boys, lock the door and stay all night. You're with Meta now. Short to waste it on you. It may 
And now, gents, give it up for our Bowery Beauties. Come here, fellas. What you got, Jack? 
And Henry, you got the east side. And who's got Brooklyn? Come on. Brooklyn, Spock Conlon's turf. Romeo, you telling me you scared of Brooklyn? Hey, hey, I ain't scared of no turf. That Spock Conlon die got me a little bit jittery. Fine, me and Davey will take Brooklyn. Me? I have to... Why is everyone so scared of Brooklyn? What are you doing here? Asking a question. Have you got an answer? Brooklyn is the sixth largest city in the entire world. You got Brooklyn, you hit the mother load. Say, for someone who works for the New York Sun, you sure spend an awful lot of time hanging around the world. What's that about? You following me? Whoa. The only thing I'm following is a story. A ragtag gang of ragamuffins wants to take on the kingmakers of New York. Think you have a chance? Shouldn't you be at the ballet? Question too difficult? I'll rephrase. Will the richest and most powerful men in New York give the time of day to a gang of kids who haven't got a nickel to their name? No, you don't gotta be insulting. I got a nickel. Yeah. Come on. So I guess you'd say you're a couple of Davids looking to take on Goliath? We never said that. You didn't have to. I did. I read a lot of papers in my time, and I ain't never noted no girl reporters writing any hard news. Wake up to the new century! The game's changing. How about an exclusive interview? Ain't you beat entertainment? This is entertaining. So far. <laughs> What's the last news story you wrote? What's the last strike you organized? <laughs> oh, you're out of your league, Kelly. Methinks a lady this gorgeous needs to be handled by a real man. <laughs> you think's wrong, Romeo. Oh. Yeah, how'd she know my name? I say we save any exclusive for a real reporter. You see somebody else giving you the time of day? All right, so I'm just busting out of the social pages. But you give me the exclusive. Let me run with the story, and I promise I'll get you the space. The space? You mean you really think we could be in the page? Well, shut down a paper like the world, and you're going to make the front page. <laughs> you want a story? Be at the circulation gate tomorrow morning, and you'll get one. And bring a camera. You're going to want to snap a picture of this. Yeah! Let's yeah. go, boys! Let's go! I got a set up for dinner. I got paying customers needing the tables. We got newsies to get yeah. yeah, you will be shooting us off when we get some mugs in the paint. Yeah. And the world will know.
your way through art school? <laughs> art school? You kidding me? But you're an artist. You've got real talent. You should be inside the papers illustrating, not outside hawking it. Maybe that ain't what I want. So tell me what you want. Can't you see it in my eyes? Hmm, have you always been their leader? I'm a blowhard. Davies the brains. Modesty is not a quality I would have pinned on you. You got a name? Catherine. Plummer. You sure? It's my byline, the name I publish under. So tell me about tomorrow. What are you hoping for? I'd rather tell you what I'm hoping for tonight. Mr. Kelly. Today we stopped the newsies from carrying out the pipes, but the wagons still delivered them to the rest of the city. Tomorrow, we stop the wagons. Are you scared? Do I look scared? Ask me again in the morning. Good answer. Good night, Mr. Kelly. Hey, where are you running off to? It ain't even supper time. I'll see you in the morning. And off the record, good luck. Hey, plumber. Write it good. We both got a lot riding on you. Just get in, it can't be 
got a clue. <laughs> you seen Spot Conlon, right? Sure we seen him. Him and about 20 of his gang. And them Brooklyn boys is big. But Spot was very impressed, wouldn't you say? I'd say. So they's with us. Well, that all depends on how you look at it. If you look and you see Brooklyn, then they're with us. They wanted proof we wouldn't fold at the first sign of trouble. Are we? We are not. There's us in Harlem. Not so fast, boss. Harlem wants to know what Brooklyn's gonna do. What about Queens? Queens will be right there backing us up. You see? As soon as we get the nod from Brooklyn. I got the same fish eye from Midtown. Well, 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 say Oscar. Looks like we got us some bum information about some strike happening here today. Fine by me. My skull busting arm could use a day of rest. <laughs> Get out of here, Morris. Hey, I don't want to see you. Get out of here. Are we doing the right thing? Sure we are. Maybe we put this off a couple of days. No, we can't. Say something. Tell them if we back down now, they will never listen to us again. We can't back down now. No matter who does or doesn't show, like it or not, now is when we take a stand. Hey, what if we just don't show up to work? I mean, that'll show them. They'll just replace us. They gotta see us stand our ground. They tell them. Now is the time to seize the day. Stare down the odds and seize the day. Minute by minute, that's how you What I made, good, huh? Strike! That's great! That's beautiful! Don't be so quick to judge. Maybe Pulitzer will see it from out of the window and feel sorry for us. Hey, Specs! Any sign of reinforcements? Davy? Courage cannot erase our fear. Courage is when. That stands side by side Too few in number And too proud to hide And say to the others Who did not follow through You're still our brothers And we will fight for you Now is the time to see Sweatshop, slaughterhouse, and factory in this town, I beg you, 
throw down your papers and join the strike. Yeah. Please. Come on. I'm with you. Yeah. yeah.
Nazis! Get them!
Just ask a fish. In the desert. Why do old people even talk? To prove they still alive. Good morning, gentlemen. Can you get a load of these glum mugs? Can these really be the same boys who made front page of the New York Sun? Hey, the front page of what? Let me see. Look it. Would you look it? That's me. Front page and you ain't even done. Hey, 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 where's me? Where's me? Wait till my old man gets a load of this. In line for the top. <laughs> you got us in the paper. You got yourselves in the paper. <laughs> Newsy, stop the world. Now there's a headline even Alma can say. <laughs> what else you got? Mine's the only story that ran. Pulitzer declared a blackout on strike news, so even I'm shut down now. I heard they arrested Crutchy. Did they get Jack too? The Delanceys are spreading a story that he took it on the lamb first sight of the cops. Jack, don't run from no bike. Take it down, shortstop. I'm just reporting the news. For jumping Jack's sake. Could you stow the curiosity long enough to drink in the moment? I'm famous. <laughs> what of it? Are you stupid or what? When you're famous, the world is yellow, You what? You Esther. Yeah, you Esther, the, the fancy clam with the pearl inside. <laughs> <laughs> what does being famous pay? You don't need money when you're famous. They give you whatever you want, gratis. Such as? A pair of new shoes with matching laces. A permanent box at the ships and races. From young Rye with a sour pickle. A personal plus on a wooden
refuge. How are you? I'm okay. Guess I wasn't much help yesterday. Snyder soaked me real good with my crutch. Oh yeah, Jack. This is crutchy, by the way. Easier guards. They is rude. They say jump or you jump or you're screwed. But the food ain't so badly so far. Cause so far they ain't brung us no food. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Huh. They miss the rooftop. It's sleeping right out in the open. In your penthouse in the sky. There's a cool breeze blowing even in July. So guess what? There's a secret escape plan I got. Tie a sheet to the bed, toss the end out the window. Climb down and take off like a shot. Maybe though, not tonight. I ain't slept and my legs still ain't right. Hey, but bullet say he's going down. And then Jack, I was thinking we might just go. Like you were saying, where? Riding Palominos every day. Once that train went. Damn this place. I'll be fine. Good as new. But there's one thing I need you to do. On the rooftop, you said that a family looks out for each other. So you tell all the fellas for me to protect one another. The end. Your friend. Your best friend. Your brother. Your 
poor girl. You heard me. I've been swatting skirts all morning. Fame is one intoxicating potion. And this here girl, Sally, she's a plum. Word is you wrote one hell of a story. You look like hell. Hey, Jack, what's that supposed to be? It's Santa Fe. I've got to tell you, Jack, this whole Go West Young Man routine is getting tired. Even Horace Greeley moved back to New York. Yes, he did. And then he died. Are her reporters supposed to be nonpartisan? Ask your reporter. Pulitzer's had me blacklisted from every news desk Can in town. Can we with the palaver and get back to business? Will Meta let us have the theater? It's what we've been trying to tell you. We want to hold a rally, a citywide meeting where every newsie gets a say and a vote. And we do it after working hours so no one loses the day's pay. Smart. Smart enough to get you committed to a padded room. The guy who paints places he's never seen is calling us crazy. You want to see a place I seen? Newsy Square, thanks to my big mouth, was overflowing with failure. Some kids hurt, others arrested. Let up. No one died. Is that what you're aiming for? Fine. Call me a quitter. Call me a coward. There ain't no way of putting the kids back in danger. We are doing something that has never been done before. How could that not be dangerous? Specs swung me a letter from Crushy at the refuge. I tried to see him. Climb the fire escape. But they beat him so bad he couldn't make it to the window. What if he don't make it? You willing to shoulder that for a tenth of a penny a pape? It's not about pennies. You said it yourself, my family wouldn't be in the mess we're in if my father had a union. This is a fight we have to win. If I wanted a sermon, I would go to church. Tell me how quitting does Crutchy any good. Exactly. So here's how it goes. Once we win, and we will be winning, make no mistake. We'll be what? We're already winning. Right. And we tell them straight up, they let Crutchy go away. They keep getting pounded. Dave, what the hell did they bust up your brains or something? As I recall, Dave, we all got our asses kicked. They won. Won the battle. Sure. Jackie, think about it. We got them so rounded. Here's what I think. Joe's a jerk. He's a rattlesnake. You're right. And you know why a snake starts to rattle? No, Cause he's scared. Go and look it up the poor guy's head is spinning. Why would he send for the goons? An entire army does. It's the goons plus the cops. And you know you may be right. Thank you, God. If he wasn't afraid. Exactly. He knows we're winning. Get those kids to see we're circling victory. And watch what happens. We're doing something no one's even tried. And yes, we're terrified. made him a frequent visitor. You called him a thief and an escaped convict. After his release, I caught him myself, red-handed trafficking stolen food and clothes. 
He was last sentenced to six months, but the willful ruffian escaped. So you'd be doing the city a service by removing this criminal from our streets? If that's the case, then we can take him in quietly and then- What good would quiet do me? I want a public example. Mr. Me. Pulitzer, the boy, Jack Kelly, is here. Here. Right outside. He's asked to see you. Ask and ye shall be received. Mr. Snyder, if you please. You need to go right now. Mr. Jack Kelly. Afternoon, boys. And which Jack Kelly is this? The charismatic union organizer or the convicted criminal and escaped convict? Which one gives us more in common? Impudence is in bad taste when crawling for mercy. Crawling? That's a laugh. I just dropped by with an invite. Seems a few hundred of your employees are rallying to discuss recent disagreements. I only wanted to offer you a chance to state your case straight to the fellas. So what do you say, Joe? When I should save you a spot on the bill? You are as impudent and disrespectful a creature as I was told. Do you know what I was doing when I was your age, boy? I was fighting in a war. Yeah, and how'd that turn out for you? It taught me a lesson that shaped my life. You don't win a war on the battlefield. It's the headline that crowns the victor. I'll keep that in mind when New York wakes up to front page pictures of our rally. Rally till the cows come home. Not a paper in town will publish a word. And if it's not in the papers, it never happens. You may run the city, but there are some of us who can't be bullied. Even some reporters. Such as that young woman who made you yesterday's news. Talented girl, don't you think? And beautiful as well. I'll tell her you said so. No need. She can hear for herself. Can't you, sweetheart? I trust you know Catherine, my daughter. Yes, my daughter. I bet you're wondering why the nom de plume and why doesn't my daughter work for me? Excellent questions. I offered Catherine a life of wealth and leisure. Instead, she chose to pursue a career, and she was showing real promise until this recent lapse. But you're all done with that now, aren't you, sweetheart? Jack, I... No, tr no need trouble, boy, with your problems, dearest. He's got a plate full of his own. Wouldn't you say so, Mr. Snyder? Hello, Jack. <laughs> Does anyone else feel a noose tightening? But allow me to propose an alternative. You attend the rally tomorrow and speak against this hopeless strike, and I'll see your criminal record expunged, and your pockets lined with enough cash to carry you in a first-class train compartment from New York to New Mexico and beyond. You did say he wanted to travel west, didn't you? There ain't a person in this room who don't know you stink. And if they know me, they know I don't care! Mark my words, boy. Defy me and I will have you and every one of your pals locked up in the refuge. You may be Mr. Tough Guy, but it isn't right to condemn that poor, crippled boy to conditions like that. And what about your pal, Davy, and his baby brother, ripped from their loving family and tossed to the rats. Will they ever be able to think you enough? Time's running out, kid. So what do you say? Cowboy or convict, I win either way. Your abject surrender was always the bottom line. The gentlemen, escort our guest to the cellar, so he may reflect in solitude. Too bad you've no job, Jack, but you did resign. Too bad you've no family, but you can't have mine. Be glad you're alive, boy, I'd say that's the bottom line. Like the fight Piper, you knew what to play. Till those kids all believed you were right. Lucky for them all, but one got away. They may not be so lucky to discretion to handle you as we see fit. So behave! I can polish you my better fast knuckle. Here, you can sleep right here next to this old printing press. Oh, no, ain't that fur!
is a fight. Prospect Park and the Navy are here. The strikes ain't fun, but the shore is excited. Loud and clear. The wind's here. The world would take green first. Friendliest place on earth. Pay us a visit, see what we mean, and when you do, when you do, when you do we'll, we'll take you halfway to Queens. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Now that soldiers is in for a soaking, what a sad way to end a career. It's a joke, but if they just were joking, loud and clear.
need to know you didn't cave for the money. I spoke the truth. You heard your father. No matter how many days we strike, he ain't giving up. I don't know what else we can do. Ah, oh, but I do. <laughs> sure. Really, Jack? Really? Only you can have a good idea? Or is it because I'm a girl? I didn't say nothing This about would be a good time to shut up. Being boss doesn't mean you have all the answers. Just the brains to recognize the right one when you hear it. I'm listening. Good for you. The strike was your idea, the rally was Davy's, and now my plan will take us to the finish line. Deal with it. The children's crusade? For the sake of all the children in every sweatshop, factory, and slaughterhouse in New York. I beg you, join us. With these words, the strike stopped being just about the newsies. You challenged our whole generation to stand up and demand a place at the table. The children's crusade. Think, Jack, if we publish this, my words, with one of your drawings, and if every worker under 21 read it and stayed home from work, or better yet, came to Newsy Square, a general citywide strike, even my father couldn't ignore that. There's only one small problem. We ain't got nowhere to print it. Oh, come on, there has to be one printing press he doesn't control. What? I know where there's one print press they would never think we choose. Well, then why are we still standing here? Wait! Stop! What's this about for you? I don't mean the children's crusade. What's this about? Am I crazy or is there something... Well, of course there is. Don't say it like it happens every day. Jack! Listen, I'm not stupid. I know girls like you don't wind up with guys like me. And I don't want you taking back nothing you gotta say later. Standing here tonight, looking at you. I'm scared tomorrow's gonna come and change everything. If only there was something I could grab a hold of to make time stop. Just so I could keep looking at you. You snuck up on me, Jack Kelly. I never even saw it coming. For sure. For sure. <laughs>
space here for the entire building. Has somebody been picking Daddy's pockets? The janitor's been working here since he was eight and hasn't had a raise in 20 years. He's with us 100%. You brought enough fellas to keep us covered? We could all the hoe down in here and no one would be the wiser. Good job. It's good to have you back again. Shut up. Here she is, boys. Just think, while my father snores blissfully in his bed, we will be using his very own press to bring him down. Remind me to stay on your good side. Is this what they print the papes on? I can see why they toss this old girl down to the cellar, but I think she'll do the job. Jack, this is Darcy. He knows just about everything there is to know about printing. You work for one of the papes? My father owns the trip. Oh. And this is Betty. She'll be typesetting the article for us. Betty, and I assume you're the daughter of William Randolph Hearst. And proud to be a part of your revolution. <laughs> well, isn't that something? In the words of the little one, can we table the palaver and get back to business? A little grease and she'll be good as gold. All right, here's how it'll work. Race, you'll let the fellows in. Then we spread the papes to every working kid in New York. After that? After that? It's up to them. There's change coming once and for all. You makes the front page, and man, you is major news. Tomorrow they'll see what we are, and sure as the star, we ain't come this far. This is the story we needed to write that's been kept out of sight, but no more. In a few hours, by dawn's early light, we'll be ready to fight us a war. This time we're in it to stay. Talk about seas in the day. Write it in ink or in blood, it's the same either way. They're gonna damn well pay. See old man Pulitzer snug in his bed, you don't care if we're dead or alive. Satin pillows are under his head, always begging for bread to survive. Joe, you can stop counting sheep. We're gonna sing, get asleep. Then why is news will be light in the views with a promise we're making a keep? Once and for all, if they don't mind, then that is we'll bleed up.
Shut up those phones! phones! The entire city is shut down, no one is working anywhere, and everyone is blaming you. They're all calling the mayor, the publishers, the manufacturers, and... French language. Good afternoon, fellas. You can't just march in. You're behind this? We had a deal. And it came with a money-back guarantee. But thank you for your lessons on the power of the press. Did you read this, boss? These kids put out a pretty good paper. Very convincing. No doubt written by my daughter. I'd sign it before someone else snatches her up. I demand to know who defied my ban on printing strike material. We're your loyal employees. We wouldn't take our business elsewhere. The old printing press in the cellar. I made you the offer of a lifetime. Anyone who does not act in their own self-interest is a fool. And what does that make you? This all started because you wanted to sell more papes. Now your circulation's down 70%. Why didn't you just come talk to us? Guys like Joe don't talk to nobody's like us. But a wise reporter once told me a good boss don't need the answers. Just the smarts to snatch up the right one when he hears it. We got you surrounded. New York is closed for business. Paralyzed. You can't get a newspaper or a shoe shine. You can't send a message or ride an elevator or cross the Brooklyn Bridge. You can't even leave your own building. So, what's your next move? Uh, Mr. Pulitzer, the mayor is here along with your daughter and uh, you won't believe who else. Good morning, Mr. Pulitzer. I think you know the governor. Governor Roosevelt? Joseph! Joseph! Joseph, what have you done now? I'm certain when you hear my explanation... Thanks to Miss Medelock and bringing your daughter to my office, I already have a thorough grasp of the situation, with graphic illustrations included. <clears throat> Bully is the word I usually employ to show my approval. But in your case, I simply mean bully! Oh, and this is the boy of whom you spoke. How are you, son? I'm told we once shared a carriage ride. Touch his mind, Mr. Governor. Well, Joe, don't just stand there letting these children sing endlessly. Give them the good news. What good news? That you've come to your senses and rolled back prices. That is, unless you want to invite a full state senate investigation into your employment practices. You wait. After the power you wielded to keep me from office, I do it with a smile. Now come along, Joseph. There's only one thing worse than a hard heart, and that's a soft head. And think of the happiness you'll bring those children. He doesn't do happiness, does he? <laughs> Mr. Kelly, if I may speak with you. Alone. Listen, keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground. You can do this. I cannot put the price back to where it was. I'm sorry, I can't. I have other considerations. I get it. You gotta keep face front for all these folks. I'm young, I ain't stupid. I'm glad we understand each other. But I got constituents with a legitimate gripe. What if, what if I reduce the raise by half and get the others to do the same? It's a compromise we could all live with. But you eat our losses. From now on, any paper you don't sell, we buy back, full price. That's never been on the table. What's to stop every newsie from taking a hundred papers they can't sell? My costs would explode. No newsie's gonna break their back hauling around a bunch of papers they can't sell. But if you could take a few extra without any risk and he sells them, your circulation would begin to grow. It's a compromise we can all live with. That's not a bad head you've got on your shoulders. Deal? Mm -hmm. That's disgusting. <laughs> it's just business. <laughs>
personal pal, Governor Theodore Roosevelt himself. Each generation must, at the height of its power, step aside and invite the young to share the day. You have all laid claim to our world, and I believe the future in your hands will be bright and prosperous. Yeah! Oh, and your drawing son has brought another matter to bear. <coughs> Officers, if you please. Jack, look, it's crunching! Yeah! Hey, you fellas, you miss me? Yeah. And look at what I brought for you as your gift straight from the refuge. Bring him in, fellas. It's Night of the Spider. He's looking so tough no more, is he? Right. Jack, with these drawings, you make an eloquent argument for shutting down the refuge. Be assured that Mr. Snyder's abuses will be fully investigated. Officer, take him away. Your Highness, may I do the honor? You've got to be joking. <laughs> oh, and you'll be laughing all the way to the pen, little man. So long, sucker. <laughs> See you later. You know, I can't help wondering if just one of your drawings could convince the governor to shut down the refuge. What might a daily political cartoon do to expose the dealings in our back rooms? What do you say, Teddy? Care to have this young man's artistry shine a light behind your closed doors? Don't sweat it, Gov. With the strike being settled, I should probably be hitting the rope. Don't you ever get tired of seeing that same old tune? What Santa Fe got that New York ain't? Tarantulas? Better yet, what's New York got that Santa Fe ain't? New York's got us. Luis family. Didn't I hear something about the strike being settled? Thanks for the nosies! Come on! Come along, Governor, and show me the back seat that I've been hearing so much about! Sell the next edition, we'll be out there! 